Hi, I'm Jacob Hornberger, president of the Future of Freedom Foundation. As some of you know, last week I published a three-part article on the Alex Jones case, and I also addressed the case in last week's Libertarian Angle, uh, in which I, I think I addressed most of the major issues in the case. Uh, but there's one issue that I didn't address, at least not in detail, that I think needs addressing. It's an important issue, and that's the purpose of today's presentation. The issue is this. Jones and his followers have made a big deal out of the notion that these civil suits in Connecticut and Texas are designed to shut him, shut him up, to stop him from expounding his perspectives and his views, to censor him. That is a silly and fallacious notion, which, and I'll show you why in this presentation. But first of all, let's put things in, a, in an overall context. We can all agree that Jones is not in jail for anything he's ever written or said. He's not in a state jail. He's not in a federal jail. Nobody's ever prosecuted him, arrested him, indicted him, and, and incarcerated him for anything he has said or done. He has been free to expound his theories, his opinions, his concepts to his heart's content without being put into jail by either state or federal officials. Now, this, what we're dealing with here, is a civil suit. It's a civil suit for damages. This confuses Jones's uh, followers. Uh, one of his followers uh, wrote me an email saying, Jacob, it's outrageous that he's been fined $965 million and the Eighth Amendment protects against this sort of thing. He's confused. This is not a criminal case. This is not a fine. In a criminal case, we, we have the, 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 the state or the federal government going after somebody for murder, rape, theft, or whatever, and if he's found guilty, the judge has the prerogative in most criminal cases of setting a fine, uh, sending the guy to jail. This is a civil case. It's over here on the civil side of the judicial system. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, we limited government libertarians, that is, liber libertarians who favor limited government, believe that these are two of the essential functions of government. Uh, one of which is the criminal side to go after murderers and rapists and thieves and the like um, and, and prosecute them, give them a fair trial, and if necessary, punish them if they're convicted. Uh, but over here, there's the civil side of the judicial system that we limited government libertarians favor. And that is that the government provides a forum, a judicial forum by which people can resolve their disputes in a peaceful manner rather than going out in the street and shooting it out between each other. This is a straight case for damages. Uh, it, it's a case for compensatory damages where the plaintiffs are seeking uh, to recover damages for, for injuries that they've suffered, allegedly, as a result of, Jan uh, of Jones's conduct. Uh, they're also seeking punitive damages that are designed to punish the defendant, but it's not a fine. It's, it's a civil remedy that is involved in the resolution of a, a dispute between two private parties. Now, it's possible that they could have settled the case before going to trial or even in the middle of trial. They could still settle it now. Uh, but a settlement requires a meeting of the minds. And obviously, there was no meeting of the minds as to what settlement would be satisfactory to both sides. And when that happens, both sides know and the lawyers know that when you go into that courtroom with a jury trial, you're rolling the dice uh, because no one can ever predict what a jury's going to do. And there's, there's normally going to be a winner and a loser. And in this case, the plaintiffs were the winner. Now, we still don't know what the judge is going to do with respect to the, the final judgment in the case. Uh, but clearly, if the, the judge issues a, a judgment in favor of the plaintiffs based on the jury verdict, the plaintiffs are the winners and, and Jones is the loser. Now, some people have, have said that the compensatory damages are excessive. Uh, that might be, uh, that they, um, we weren't there to listen to the evidence. Uh, we do know this, that the damages were split among a large number of families. Uh, the, the largest award for any particular family, as I understand it, was $120 million. Um, is it excessive? Well, uh, we don't know because we weren't there to listen to the evidence. Uh, it, it's clear that the, these families suffered tremendous emotional damage as a result of what happened here from Jones's followers. Uh, one of his followers actually went out and urinated on the gravesite of one of the kids. 
And uh, another one pounded on the door of a family and said, I know your daughter's in there. And the, the daughter was dead and buried. And uh, some families had to move three or four times to get away from this, uh, this harassment. And, and, and they were saying that, that these families were actors and they, they, they were uh, made all this up to get gun control enacted and so forth. And so uh, is there sufficient evidence to support this large uh, jury award? That's what courts are for. That's what the judge will do. The, the trial judge could reduce the amount of the, of the jury verdict. On appeal, that could happen. And Jones's lawyers have already announced they're going to appeal. Um, and that indicates that Jones's lawyers have some confidence in the system. Uh, otherwise, they, they wouldn't be appealing if they thought it was just going to be a waste of time. But they feel confident that they can convince appellate court judges or the, the Connecticut Supreme Court or the Texas Supreme Court, as the case may be, because there's a similar case over there, uh, of the merits of their position. And it's very possible that a court could say the damages are excessive under the law and under the evidence and, and reduce them. Uh, but that's how a civil case works. Um, now, also, in certain instances, the, the plaintiffs can sue for punitive damages. This is not a fine. It's just designed to punish the, the defendant for particularly egregious conduct, reckless conduct, intentional conduct. For example, if somebody's driving down the road and he sees somebody that he ha absolutely hates on the side of the road, he just decides to run him down. That victim can sue for compensatory damages for the damages he suffered, but also he can sue for punitive damages to punish the defendant for this conduct and to deter, deter, deter others from doing the same thing. Now, this civil court system is contrasted with what in the libertarian movement, there's a segment of the libertarian movement that, that are called the anarchists. And they want, their position is they want to abolish the entire judicial system at the state level, no more state judges, no more appellate courts, none of that. They want to dismantle the whole federal system, the Supreme Court, the courts of appeals, uh, the, the whole system. They want to get rid of it. They want anarchy. And that's why they're called anarchists. Total anarchy. And their, their position is that each person should be free to establish or subscribe to his own judicial system, his own um, military force and police force and sheriff's department and so forth, uh, all privately owned. And, and so uh, if that had been the case, the Jones case provides a perfect demonstration of why the, the anarchist paradigm is fatally defective. Now, several years ago, I wrote a multi-part essay on this. It's entitled, Why I Favor Limited Government. Uh, you can find it at fff.org, our website. Or you can just Google why I favor limited government and put my name, Jacob Hornberger, there, and it'll pop up. And the, the purpose of that multi-part series was not only to show why I favor limited government, but also to show why the anarchist paradigm is inherently defective. And it is inherently defective. It cannot work. It's incapable of working. And the Jones case actually provides a perfect example, a demonstration of this uh, point. So if Jones, for example, had his own private force, uh, military force and judicial system, there's no doubt that it would rule in his favor, okay? That, that they would say, oh, this is ridiculous, free speech. Uh, there should be no libel and slander laws. We rule that Jones wins. He doesn't have to pay anything. Over here, the plaintiff's judicial system would rule $965 million. And so you have now two judgments, conflicting judgments uh, in, by two co-equal courts. Who wins? Who, which judgment prevails? See, there's no way to resolve it except through violence. Uh, there would be a war between the two private military forces, police force, sheriffs, or whatever. There'd be shootouts. There'd be a lot of dead bodies. And at the end, the winner would be the, the one that has the more powerful uh, police force. And that's the inherent defectiveness of the, of the uh, anarchy paradigm. Uh, over here, you've got a winner. And you got a loser. And both sides understand that when they go into that jury trial. There's going to be a winner and a loser. And the loser here uh, has to pay up uh, if, if the judgment ultimately stands. And uh, because it's the force of the state that enforces that judgment. There's no way a, a losing party is going to be able to stand up against the force of the state when the sheriff's department shows up and starts seizing assets uh, and start selling them to satisfy the, the plaintiff's judgment. Now, let's address this central point that, that 
Jones's followers um, and Jones are saying that this is all designed to shut him up and stop him from expanding his views. That is absolutely not the case at all. And the worst thing that can happen here is that Jones goes into poverty. Uh, it's been estimated that he's worth some $50 million to $200 million. Great. I mean, more power to the guy. He's done well. Uh, but it's entirely possible that if this judgment stands, both in Connecticut and in Texas, that this will wipe him out financially. Uh, he will end up a poor person if this happens because they, they will see, seek out and seize his assets to satisfy these judgments. But what's important to keep in mind is that this doesn't censor him. He's, in, he's still free as a poor person to write articles, publish articles to his heart's content. Still be free to do that. I mean, there's nothing that says in the, in the law that poor people can't write articles and expound their views on the Internet. It happens all the time. You get a cheap little website and you, you start posting your articles. You, you can be as poor as a church mouse. And so at the worst that can happen here is that Jones ends up like a lot of other people, either middle class or or poor, he's no longer a multimillionaire, but he's still free to expound his views. There's no censorship of his views. Uh, now, let me address the, the issue of libel and slander laws, because I support libel and slander laws, but <laughs> the anarchists are going on the attack against me on the internet. I mean, they're, I've been dealing with this for 33 years. Uh, they've been attacking me for 33 years. Uh, for my support of limited government and my support of libel and slander laws. And it, was, was, it comes with the territory. I'm used to it. But what's kind of sad is that some of them are resorting to name calling and personal attacks. And it's sad because it's so unnecessary. And, and what I've learned it over the years is that people that do that, usually it's because they lack confidence in their position. When you're feeling solid about your position, you just limit yourself to argumentation and debate and you address the issues and you engage in debates and so forth, but you don't resort to the name calling and the, the personal attacks and so forth. Uh, but in any event, libel and slander law has been with us not just a few years, not even a few decades. It's been with us for centuries. In fact, there's a famous case in 1734, mind you, uh, 40 years before the Declaration of Independence involving a man named John Zinger. And the court in that case held, the reason it's a famous case is because the court held that an action for defamation um, can be uh, negated by showing that the defamatory statement is true. So the court declared that truth is a defense to a def uh, case for libel and slander. And uh, I think it's safe to say that most people believe in libel and slander laws, that most people believe in government. Uh, I, I can guarantee you that the American people are not going to adopt anarchy at any time in the near future. Uh, they're not going to just dismantle the whole state system and the judicial system and the courts of appeals and the, and the, the state Supreme Courts and the federal judiciary and the Supreme Court and burn the Constitution. It's not going to happen. Most people believe in government. Now, we, we can have a debate over what the proper role of government is, and that's, of course, what FFF does. We, we, we outline what should be the proper role of government. Uh, but, but, but the existence of limited government, as we've seen in this civil suit, uh, and in criminal cases is, is critically important. And the same thing is libel and slander laws. Um, most people believe in these laws. Uh, they think they're proper. Um, for example, if let's say some uh, big rich jerk of a president of a corporation decides he doesn't like some janitor in town, small little town, he starts spreading the word that the janitor uh, molested a kid and the janitor loses his job, he can't get a new job in the community, uh, he's ostracized because everybody believes in this, this big, rich jerk of a president, and uh, the, the janitor can't support his family. They're struggling. Um, the, the anarchist would say, well, that's just, that's just part of anarchy. Um, not me. I say I love the fact that that janitor can file suit in court for, for defamation against the sky, recover damages, including loss of income, and, and sue him for punitive damages to punish him for doing this intentionally. Uh, and I think most people would agree with that. Uh, so you're, you're not going to see libel and slander laws uh, abolished anytime soon. Uh, most people agree with these laws. In fact, there's a very notable person uh, who believes in libel and slander laws. He's quite famous. Uh, would you care to guess who that person is? 
if you guessed Alex Jones, get a gold star and go to the front of the class. Yes, Alex Jones believes in libel and slander laws. <laughs> How's that for irony? And how do I know that? Because just a few years ago, the guy filed his own suit for libel and slander against two entities seeking damages against them. In other words, he's using the system that he now decries that to, to do the same thing the plaintiffs have done to him in Connecticut and in Texas, seeking damages. The, the, the suits are essentially based on the same principle, defamation and the, and the recovery of damages. How's that for irony? Now, have any of Jones's followers criticized Jones for doing this? Well, if they have, I don't know about it. And, and, and I know this, that at least some of his followers take the position that in the Alex Jones movement, it is, it is verboten, uh, forbidden to, to criticize Jones, just like it was verboten among Jim Jones's followers to criticize Jim Jones. It's just not supposed to be done. And among some of these followers, if, if a follower were to criticize Jones, they'd go after him with all guns blaring. I mean, uh, personal attacks and everything for, for daring to criticize the leader. But all of a sudden, when Jones, <laughs> somebody uh, defends uh, these libel and slander laws against Jones, all of a sudden, some of his followers are just up in arms, you know, the system's crooked, the, the judge uh, improper rulings, the jury verdict is bad, and, and so forth. <laughs> so it's a little bit of irony here. But let's address the real, let's conclude here with this presentation with what really is the important issue for me. I mean, set aside whatever you think about the jury verdict and the judicial system and anarchy and libel and slander laws. Set all that aside and just focus on what Jones did, his conduct in, in, in targeting these, these grief-stricken families who had just lost children uh, in a gun massacre. I mean, I, I've never lost a child. I, I don't know what it feels like, but my hunch is that there is nothing more painful than losing a child. I, I think it's more painful than losing a parent, a sibling, a spouse, or a good friend, um, because it's so unnatural for a parent to be burying a child. And uh, to, 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 what, to target these grief-stricken families who had lost children with what Jones uh, said about them, uh, to me, is one of the most horrendous, despicable shameful and dishonorable acts that I have ever seen in my entire lifetime. And I believe independent of what everyone thinks about the system, uh, his, what he did to these grief stricken families that lost children in that gun massacre deserves nothing less than moral condemnation and criticism.